he's getting ready to position you into the next level. But until your mentality grows to where you can be forgetful, to where you're not holding grudges, to where you're not being affected to a, a great manner, God won't do that. So right now he has you on hold, but he wants to know that you're going to trust him, that you're going to be ready. Welcome back to my channel. This is Keo from All Things Keo. And if this is your first time here, then welcome. So I was reading my chronological Bible. And if you guys don't know what a chronological Bible is, it's basically the Bible and they arrange it in the events that it happened. So chronological date, basically. As I was reading... Um, I got to the part where it was getting ready to get into Joseph's story. And if you guys are not familiar with Joseph, um, they call him the King of Dreams. Um, there's a Disney movie actually on it, but I recommend reading it in the Bible and not watching the Disney movie. Um, you'll, you'll be getting it from the source as opposed to, you know, when they remake things. And it was a kid's movie, so... I definitely encourage you guys to read it in the Bible. So as I was reading and I get to that point, I wanted to just skip over it because I'm like, who doesn't know the story about Joseph? And it was getting ready to talk about his dreams. So the next part was up ahead was getting into Judah, which was Leah's fourth son and we know in my last video I mentioned he is the one that's chosen for the lineage to move forward all the way down to um, to Jesus so I wanted to get into that section which was going into him and his daughter-in-law so if you guys haven't read that definitely get into it um, the Bible is filled with these crazy stories that happen and I feel like they're just reflections of things that happen nowadays um just obviously in a, we're in more advanced times but i always reference the bible as like our roadmap on how to live life on you know how to navigate certain situations so i wanted to fast forward and get to the juicy stuff but then i decided i'm like okay god i'll i'm gonna read everything whether I already know it, whether I don't know, because every time we read the Bible, you may reflect on it a little bit different than what you've read previously. So I start reading and it's going into how Joseph was having dreams. And it explained how Joseph was his father, who is Jacob, his father's favorite child. So... When I say he was his favorite child, I don't mean like it wasn't obvious. You know, we have siblings. Well, for those of us who have siblings, you always say there's always one that's the favorite. But this was like a favoritism that was on another level. Um, his dad made him a nice coat. It was colorful, it was expensive. And he didn't do that for his other sons. And in those times, the favorite usually was the oldest um, because that was the person who would carry the lineage. And they would be, you know, looked as the future. But Joseph was not the oldest. He wasn't the second oldest. He was literally the baby. So his brothers grew resentment. And I as I was reading that, I started to meditate. And, you know, I started thinking about how, as God's children, when God shows favor in us, there are others who are resentful towards us for that. We start to kind of, through that favor, and God doesn't have favorites. He doesn't have favorites in this world. 
um, he loves us all the same because he created us. But if you put, if you are obedient and you are doing God's will and the purpose that he has designed you for, um, he will show favor, you know, his, you'll see his hand in your life. And it just made me think, wow, a lot of times we're in these situations uh, where God is showing us favor and it's almost like creating enemies. And I was um, relating to that and just meditating on them like, wow, God, just as Jacob favored Joseph, you show favor for us, your, your children who are obedient and you give us these dreams and you give us these ministries and you give us these roles and these titles and that creates enemies. It creates people who envy what you are giving forward for God. You know, what are you are doing in the kingdom of God. And if you read the story, if you read through the whole story, his brothers envied him to the point where they, they really wished death on him. But they ended up settling with selling him into slavery. Right now, if you're in a season where you are being mistreated, nobody can stand you because in the Bible, it also speaks on how they would talk with Joseph and how they would interact. They were not kind towards him. So if you're in this season and you and you find yourself in a place where people are not kind to you, they cannot stand you, you know, they're, they're envious of you, they're treating you badly, I urge you to trust in God's process and just get into prayer and get into fasting and read your word and trust that God will work that for good. Like Romans 8 28 says, everything he works for our good because we love him. So be patient. Patience is one of those things that us Hispanics like to say, um, you know, don't ask for patience because God will give you the trials until you earn that patience. So, but we also know that patience is one of the fruit of the spirit. As we're in this transitional period where God is ready to move us into a new place, into a new level, uh, he's ready to exalt you over your enemies and, and pull you out from slavery and give you a position where you have authority over your enemies, over those who have persecuted you, who have talked about you, who have treated you unfairly. God is ready to promote you and give you that authority. And, you know, it's not to discriminate against them. There are some people, unfortunately, that struggle with certain things within themselves that God has to break those chains within their lives and they have to submit and be obedient, you know, and in that, in that work that they have to do, they will have to ask you for forgiveness. You know, if you, if you continue reading the story of Joseph, he was given a position in the Pharaoh's home and through his gift of being able to translate dreams, he was able to save many people because a famine had came. He was able to decipher what the dream meant that the Pharaoh was having. And the Pharaoh, Potiphar, I don't know how to say it, Potiphar in Spanish, uh, he gave Joseph a position of power. Joseph basically was the second most influential, most powerful person in those times after the Pharaoh. Because he was basically portioning out the food uh, for everyone to make it last during the time that there was going to be that famine. His family, not knowing what happened to him, they come down and Joseph sees them. Right? I'm sure Joseph, just like many of us, when we're wrongly treated, we want to match that energy as people like to say and return it back to them the same way that they gave it to us. But if you are a good Christian, you'll know that in the word, we are not supposed to 
you know, give them in return what they gave to us. We should be kind. We should turn the other cheek. We should pray for our enemies. You know, as long as we are being Christ-like, God will end up working that out for your good. And when Joseph seen his, his brothers, he was upset, just like any of us would be, you know, because he was betrayed. It was a, a big betrayal. You know, if God's hand wasn't involved in the situation, who knows how it would have turned out for him. But we have a merciful God. We have a loving God. And he designed us and he created us, you know. So he created Joseph to have uh, a loving, forgiving heart. You know, fast forward, I'm going to skip over some details, but he was able to reveal to his brothers who he was. And those dreams that he had all those years ago that were of his brothers basically bowing down to him before him was basically his his position that he was going to have over them. If he wanted to, he could have locked them up in jail. He could have turned them away, you know, not give them any food. They could have died out and starved, right? But because God knew what would happen, because God was involved in the situation, because Joseph was obedient to God, God gave him that position, that authority to be able to save his family. And not only his family, but every other family in those times that were going to be starving to death. You know, right now you're being mistreated and it hurts, you know, and you're just asking yourself, God, why am I in this situation where I'm around these people? Bring me to another place, you know, but God is telling you, just stay still a little bit longer and trust that he is preparing your position. He's preparing your next level for you. So this, I'm I'm so thankful and it's very humbling because I was literally talking to myself. But when I talk to myself, it's like I'm talking to God always. And I was ready to skip forward to the juicy part of of what I thought was juicy. And I almost missed this word that is also a word for me. You know, God loves you and he loves me and he loves this world that he gave Jesus to sacrifice himself for our sins. You know, all he wants is your obedience. He wants you to trust him. He wants you just to give up the little control that you have over your life and trust that he's going to make it better for you. And in this new season, when he brings you out of slavery, when he frees you from the chains of prison, he's getting ready to position you into the next level. But until your mentality, until your mentality grows to where you can be forgetful, to where you're not holding grudges, to where you're not being affected to a, a great manner, God won't do that. So right now he has you on hold, but he wants to know that you're going to trust him, that you're going to be ready. You know, you can't, you can't, I I heard this, um, the saying in it, I forget what pastor was preaching. It was online. It's like, you can't gift a four-year-old a car, right? And expect them to drive in the road without getting into an accident. You know, they have to grow up, learn how to drive, get a driver's license. It's steps to be able to drive a car and not, you know, it will be a disaster if you give them that car and allow them to go at four years old to drive a vehicle, you know? So it's the same with us. We're in a process, but every process that we're in is certain steps that we have to take. So I pray that this word was a blessing in your life. And I pray that God continues to renew his presence in your life, that, I, that you invite the Holy Spirit to guide you, to guide every step that you take, you know? They may envy you and they may hate you because of the dreams that you have. But in the end, the end, it will be worth it. So God bless you and have a wonderful day. In every circumstance, you all try.